tremendous looking trophy. One the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name is John Blight. And joining me today, no one. It's a solo show. Get ready to listen to me ramble for an exceedingly long time as I am unable to move on from one subject to another because there's no one here to bounce off of. That's fine. We'll get through it. I'm sure I'm doing a solo show. It's fine. We're just going to kick along. It's a rather short news week this week. Uh, we had a bunch of stuff. I'm going to do quick two quick housekeepings. Uh, that'll lead you to other content that'll help you. So A, Horizon, we'll touch on a little bit on Horizon Forbidden West in a minute with a story, but otherwise, Horizon Forbidden West, we did release a bonus episode last week following the State of Play. Uh, myself and Ash talk about that State of Play and our thoughts on the game itself for roughly 20 minutes. So if you haven't listened to that, it is on this feed, it is on the YouTube channel, uh, wherever you want to find it, it's on the podcast services. So go check that out. Stay to play Horizon Forbidden West bonus episode of Platinum Explosion. Uh, and then there was a whole heap of news that dropped last week as to like Far Cry and Dying Light and all these other things that were very much in this whole like pre E3 thing that's happening. Uh, and presumably there'll be a bunch more happening later this week. I'm recording this on Tuesday, Australia time. Uh, America had this long weekend thing so they had monday off so i'm i'm expecting a lot of news to start dropping uh later tonight like early around you know like 11 p.m through to even that 1 a.m sort of time period as they they're they're heading through to their tuesday possibly so it could be another really big week but otherwise it's going to be a rather uh short episode i believe as long as i don't ramble too much I, I cross fingers for audio listeners. It's fine. Uh, this week. But there are two things. So check out RK Couch if you want to hear myself, Kieran, Ash talk about some of the other big topics. And then if you want to hear more F- Horizon F- F- Forbidden West, uh, check out that bonus episode. So let's get into what we've got this week. Firstly, PlayStation Plus games for June. Uh, they did get released after we called last week, of course, as they always do. But now they, they are live. They went live right before I started recording this podcast in fact so your games are operation tango on ps5 star wars squadrons ps4 and then virtua fighter 5 ultimate showdown on the ps5 as well now operation tango is a brand new game uh it's releasing on playstation plus at the same time it releases in the wild uh i reviewed it i played it with ash on pc so you should could check out the review up on Explosion Network.com. Uh, gave the game a 7.5. This is, I have I can't confirm or deny if it's as good on PlayStation, of course. I'm hoping it is. Uh, so it is a co-op game, co-op puzzle game in which one person plays as a spy, another person plays as a hacker. And you have to play it in co-op. You cannot trick this. You can. You have to play as co-op. And also, there's no split screen co-op. This is online only co-op because of the way the game's designed and communication is vital. You have to be able to talk to one another. You have to have voice comms. You can't just be like relying on you know that that thing you do in a lot of games where it's like, well, you know, gamer gamers just know and you'll figure it out. No, you literally need to be able to communicate and talk and explain things that you see on each other's screens and stuff like that. I will say straight away, I'll go read the full review for more or listen to last week's episode, RK Couch, because me and Ash talk about experience with the game a little bit more on that one as well. But it's 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 fun to play as either character. I really enjoyed it. It is short though, so it's about I'm saying three to five hours to beat it, depending on how good you are at the puzzles. So like, and it could be below three if you're really good at just communicating with your partner and flying through the puzzles, to be honest. Now, right before show, as I said, the games went live. Uh, I did notice I kept checking throughout the week to see if the trophies had gone live for Operation Tango because after beating it and seeing how short it was, being like, I wonder if this would be like an achievable easy, if it has a platinum, that'd be great. Uh, The trophies still aren't live technically, uh, I did manage to do tricks to, you know, to be able to see them, like I have to do for some embargo games, of course. Uh, it does have a platinum. Uh, most of the trophies, there's like one trophy for every level. There's only six levels, and there's one for each character. So you got a total of like 12 trophies there for beating them, and you get a goal for beating them with each separate character and like a goal for beating both characters or something. So you got to play through the game twice, and as I said, that's like three to five hours. So you could play the game twice in, in six hours technically, which isn't that long. And then there's a couple of Michelin trophies. It looks like an easy platinum to me. So if you want to add that to your list, if you love getting easy platinums, 
with someone else, then I'm going to say Operation Tango is a is a go there. Uh, so your two PS4 games, Star Wars Squadrons, of course, it's the Star Wars uh, TIE Fighter and all that sort of X-Wing Fighter, the, the one you can play in VR or not in VR, whatever you want to do that came out last year. I, time flies. Uh, and then Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. I have no fucking, it's a fighting game, I'm sure. I don't really know. So my pick is Operation Tango. As, as much as a Star Wars fan as I am, I never actually got around to finishing the story mode in Squadrons. It was okay. I had to find in the multiplayer. I always thought I'd go back, but there was a lot happening around that time. So, but my my pick is Operation Tango. It's it's pretty fun. As I said, seven point five Rima full review, explosion uh, All right, next news story. Again, Horizon Forbidden West talked about. Go listen to the podcast. But uh, Push Square writes Horizon Forbidden West looks insane, but it's easier to appreciate the improvements when they're presented side by side with Horizon Zero Dawn. This excellent visual comparison digs into some of the key changes in the sequel, like facial animations, water, and overall geometry design. The differences are enormous, and the original 2000 title was no slouch at all. The video does point out that there's no ray tracing in this build, so it'll be interesting if developer Guerrilla Games is able to add that prior to release, or if it's happy with what it's got going for now. It also notes that due to the compressed nature of the source video, uh, it's unclear what resolution the release is running at on PS5, although 4K is expected. So yeah, this is a video from the uh, channel El Anastalida De Bites. I can't, I'm not sure if I ever say it correctly, but they did a really cool video before on um, comparing like Spider-Man. I remember that was the first time I saw a channel. Uh, comparing like Spider-Man um, running at 60 or 30 and these sorts of things. And if you're watching the video now, I have, I'm going to have a few seconds up showing the comparison between the, the character models and the lighting and all this sort of stuff they point out in the video. And it is like a huge, I think, hugely noticeable upgrade. Uh, I mean, it, it looks, it's that sort of thing where it's like, well, the game came out three, four years ago. Of course, it looks prettier, but I just think the, the huge improvement in the character uh, facial animations and just in general the way characters and monsters interact with the world is like the the huge standout in this um, i know throughout the week there was a thing where people on twitter were getting up and antsy about like oh it runs at 30 it's literally the first i'm gonna say this right now this is literally the first gameplay we've seen for this game and as much as i hope that it runs at 60 i think to be crying over not confirmed 60 the first time you see gameplay for something is like can we just you know how about you fucking chill out and, and, and sit down for a hot second? Like, just sit the fuck down. Because what's presumably, I presume what's going to happen here, and hopefully if Sony studios are all playing well with one another and communicating, which is what they should be, you're going to have studios like Insomniac and whoever else going, well, this is how we do these cool things. This is, you know, sharing this sort of information. And hopefully what you'll have at launch for Horizon Forbidden Dawn, uh, Forbidden West, sorry, Forbidden Dawn, and all PlayStation exclusive games, I hope at launch is what you should have is a 30, 30 frames per second mode, like the super duper visual impressive one where it's definitely going to be 30. Maybe it's like 94K. Maybe it has ray tracing, probably not in an open world game. I don't I don't really know. Uh, or more likely, more likely if they add ray tracing, it'll be like 2K super sampled up, ray tracing 30. But then hopefully you have the options. Okay, well, I want to play it at 60. Okay, well, you can play it at 1080p, super sampled up to 4K, and you're like, but Dylan, that probably sounds disgusting, and why would I want to play that? Spoilers, in case you didn't know it, Returnal is 1080p, like, scaled up to 4K, and it looks really pretty because it's done well, and no one probably even fucking noticed because there's just so much happening on screen and particles and whatever else it's like. You can do that on PS4 anyway. Like, the, the, the resolution really doesn't matter sometimes and you got all these really cool technologies now like DLS, dlsr um and all these sorts of things and um if we ever get the announcement of nintendo switch pro i'm um, almost we can almost guarantee that the only way they get 4k running on that is probably through the use of uh dls uh, dlsr or equivalent thing so i mean really cool video if you want to check it out of course i'll you know show notes as usual links and stuff in the doobly doo down below uh, Kotaku writes, Destruction All Stars is getting bots because not enough people are playing it. Destruction All Stars released in February exclusively on the PS5. Doesn't seem to have a huge community of players online. So to help improve matchmaking, developers have announced plans to add online bots. The news of bots being added to the game was revealed in a dev update post on Reddit. In the post, the devs at Lucid Games laid out the future plans for the online car combat game. Part of this plan is to add some bots, saying, quote, with a community the size of Destruction All Stars. Spread out across the world, we do have peak times and low times of player activity for online matchmaking. 
According to Lucid Games, the bots are being added to help improve matchmaking during the low times. Although a more cynical take is that nobody is really playing this game anymore and bots are needed to fill up all the empty slots for the few folks still around. Lucid Games did clarify that the bots won't be added to blitz and competitive focus mode and only humans will be able to play in that. Look, this isn't shocking news in particular. Uh, Destruction Old Stars played it when it came out, of course. We enjoyed it here at Explosion Network, uh, here at Plex Explosion. You know, myself and Ash were playing some with Buddy Watson from over at Radio Watson. Was having a good time. We played it for, what, a couple weeks? If that, and then it fizzled out. And the reason it kind of fizzled out is it didn't, and compared to a lot of other games we play, especially this day and age, multiplayer games and these sorts of things, it didn't have the hook. It didn't have the hook there. And the, 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 it didn't have even the most simplest hook that I, I'm going to complain about for these sorts of games going forward, which is, look, you need to have a good unlock system with just straight up three free, sorry, F-R-E-E, <laughs> free interesting like costumes and decals for your car and this sort of stuff and that game didn't have it like it didn't even have the most basic hook and some people don't even care about that but i'm like that's the thing you're going to use to hook in most people to to care about what they're actually doing when they're leveling up i mean in my review that's a key thing i sort of mentioned it's like there's really no like what are we doing like i'm playing i'm leveling up i'm going to fizzle out pretty quickly and that's what ended up happening uh, i think they expected the hook to be this rollout of the um I can't remember the official title, but they had like those story mode things where you had to do these single player missions and you learn about the backstory of all the champions, all stars, I guess, yeah, all stars. You learn about their backstories and stuff. And they only had one available at launch, if you recall. And they've rolled out like one or two more since then that I've seen. Maybe there's more, but these are the only ones I've noticed out of a cast of what, like 16, 12 to 16 characters or something like that. I, I think that was another thing that I made a huge mistake on. Like only having one at launch done so um and again look maybe this this isn't the the end all be all like worst case scenario for this so far solely because solely because the game was given to us for free if people had paid the 125 or one whatever full price uh at ps5 launch day when we originally thought this was going to be released and now several months later they were like, look, not enough people are playing it. Everyone traded it back in. DB games, no one's playing the game. It would have been like an even bigger mess. So uh, maybe it'll go free to play. I don't know. It's kind of just, because the game is fun. It just doesn't, it just, it's not quite there. Like, I mean, it, it, it is fun when it's, when you, when you're playing it. So I, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one to truly be like, you know, you deserve this. They didn't deserve it. Push Square writes in Charter 4 heading to PC. Investor presentation claims today when they wrote this. Well, Sony Investors Re Sony Investor Relations Day for 2021, which rarely results in news for such sites as ours. However, this year's presentation from the Games and Network Services segment has resulted in one fairly interesting nugget of information. Uncharted 4, a thief's end, is supposedly being prepped for a PC release following the footsteps of Horizon Zero Dawn, and most recently, Days Gone. It appears on the 26th slide through here, and we've got a link listed as a new growth factor for PlayStation Studios alongside mobile and games as service. The slide also reveals that the PC version of Horizon Zero Dawn resulted in a 250% return on investment, and that Sony's expansion into the personal computer market is designed to target other territories such as India, Russia, and China. Of course, we've known for some time now that the hardware manufacturer plans to bring many more PS4 exclusives to PC in the future. Most recently, a Steam curator page for PlayStation Studios was set up, listing anywhere up to uh, 15 PC releases. Um, so yeah, I said last week, I think it was last week, where I was saying I actually thought it was end up being The Last of Us because I was like, oh, it's time to pull the, the trigger on what is considered PlayStation's biggest franchise, I guess. But uh, Uncharted 4, it looked great on PC. I'm sure a lot of people have a great time playing, but I'm also like, they don't have the trilogy. Right? I mean... Like I, I think Uncharted 4 is the best game in that franchise. I mean, but it's also not the best game unless you have the three games before it for the character history and stuff like that, you know? So uh, I, I just don't know how, if that would hit as well on the platform. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe there's a bunch of people who played the original trilogy on PS3 and they're like, well, they'll just buy it. Maybe they switch to PC afterwards. Um, maybe they don't really care because as they list here, they made a 250% growth 
on Horizon Zero Dawn, a game that they released on PC several years after it was already released, and they made a killing when it released on PlayStation anyway. It was hugely successful and spawned a sequel that's coming out this year at a time, although we don't have a date because they didn't give us one in the state of play. So that's a that's a, that's that's a thing that's also still annoying. But they made a bunch of money, free money, and I mean that's the reason you've had other things coming. It's like uh, Days Gone. Days Gone actually sold pretty well. I like to clarify this every time Days Gone comes up. Days Gone did not re- did not review particularly well. It reviewed okay. Uh, again, it didn't review badly. It reviewed okay. Uh, but it made a mu- bunch of money. It made a bunch of money all over the world, in fact. It did really well in places you wouldn't have expected it done re- really well. It did really well in Japan. Um, so it, it wasn't out of money. However, <coughs> Sony moved over to PC. They're making a bunch of money. They're making a bunch of money. It was on the top page at Steam Store and all these sorts of things. So... It's just free money, mate. Free money. I think there'll be an interesting standout amongst this inf- this stuff, though. Although we, you know, again, they haven't one hundred percent confirmed Uncharted Four is coming, but it one hundred percent. It's like this is ninety nine percent. Just wait for the release date, I guess. It's like it's a thing. This is an investor thing. Ninety nine percent. When's it coming? Don't know. It's coming. Um, would they announce that at E three? Probably not. Uh, what is it? There, blah blah blah. Games as service. PlayStation hasn't talked too much of games and service, but the fact they're not in that game, the fact they're not in the games and service, it's almost as bad as like AAA, isn't it? Uh, games and service. The fact they're not in that makes sense, but I, I'm really not sure what franchise or property they would choose to dive into that games and service thing, or maybe it's a new pro- thing they're working on. Maybe it's a, maybe a games and service game is what's being worked on with that that new first-person shooter or shooter or whatever. We talked about that studio like a month or so back. Maybe that's what they're working on. Uh, gains a service, but also I think if if Sony rushes this and does it wrong and doesn't try to target a more niche market or something like that, they'll just it's not they're not going to have a successful games of service. And the, the other thing I wouldn't be surprised is if they would tie this into everything we're talking about, which is that they try and make a franchise or a game or or something that they can they can just have as a good cash cow. Doesn't mean it can't be a, a good game, you know. Like peeps, I love Apex Legends. Play a fuck ton. Makes a bunch of money. Has loot boxes, whatever else. I don't think their loot boxes is bad as other games, but it has them. They make a bunch of money. Still a great game. Fantastic game, right? So they can make a good games and service. But I think if it's only a PlayStation, PS5, where people can't even buy them, is it as good as having a games and service that people not enough people are playing? So probably not. So it would be smarter for Sony to make a games and service game that also is on PC. You yeah. know? Releases has crossplay PC, PS5. That'd be a smart play. The even smarter play would be to have mobile version all at the same time. That's the and as I talked, we know they've been wanting to get into mobile for a while. We talked about this story before. What properties, games, and franchises they could turn into mobile games? Of course, we, you know I think we we discussed this previously. We talked about how the previous uh, mobile games like the Hand Charter one, all these sorts of things, Sackboy Run, and whatever else didn't do very well. However. Games of service game that's mobile, PC, PS5. That could do well. Press Start writes, God of War Ragnarok looks to be the official name of the next God of War games. This comes from the same presentation, um, marketing thing, investor thing, whatever it was. Uh, Shannon Rush, probably the same marketing deck that confirmed that Charter 4 is coming to PC. Sony has also seemingly confirmed that next God of War game is called God of War Ragnarok. It was thought this this could be the case with the tagline, Ragnarok is coming, showing at the end of the reveal trailer. But Sony has never called it as such, and the game has no title when it was revealed. Unfortunately, the presentation doesn't confirm whether it's still on track for 2021 release date, although it looks unlikely at this point. It does point to the fact that the game will potentially be a PS5 exclusive unlike Horizon Forbidden West and Spider-Man Miles Morales. So it'll be interesting to see. So yeah, it's this little graphic um, that was shown the, on the... Uh, you, you look If you're watching the video, I've got it up on the Press Start website. It was this little graphic that they had in a little investor thing. It says, best ever post-launch lineup, first-party titles, PlayStation Studios logo, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, Return of Retro Clank, Rift Apart, Animal Beat the Show... These games that are out there have Metacritics below them because Metacritic's good for marketing. Uh, third party titles have got Deathloop, Far Cry 6, Ghost Wire, Final Fantasy, blah, blah, blah. Um, people have pointed out after the fact, though, that the logo is not official or anything. It's actually a, a fair mock up or something that 
it seems the the person, the analyst or whoever was in charge of putting together this thing, whatever the, the official job title would be, that they, it seems they just like Googled Gold of War Ragnarok and grabbed the logo and went for it. But they also may not be, like just because they're working at PlayStation Sony, they may not be, you know, of course, like deep into uh, a, a game of themselves or like fully keeping up with what's happening. And maybe they have internally, they know that it's called God of War. Ragnarok, they may not realize that's an official confirmed title and they just went to Google the logo because it's faster than trying to find a file, <laughs> I guess, at their own workplace or something like that. Or, or maybe they couldn't even find one because yeah, it's not the official title or they haven't actually done an official logo yet or any of these sorts of things. Um, there's not really much to this other than pretty much everyone's called the game God of War Ragnarok since reveal because it's the title that makes the most sense. It's the title that everyone's jumped to. Uh, calling it untitled God of War sequel, also aka the game we think is called God of War Ragnarok is like the official I get why you could go about it, but at this stage, it's like if they don't call Ragnarok, it would be dumb because that's literally everyone's what everyone's been calling it. It's a cool name. If they come out and give the official trailer and they're like, God of War 2, Thor, just <laughs> probably not, probably not a smart decision in my opinion, but uh, PlayStation Lifestyle writes Sony considers returning like successful new IP as PS5 owners cumulatively spend over 5.8 million hours playing it. In a recent Investors Day re- presentation, this that's all about Investors Day this week, uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment revealed that it considers Housemark's return like successful new IP alongside Sucker Punch Productions' Ghost of Tsushima. That's quite a feat for a Finnish studio as it tr- from as it transitions from making smaller arcade games to AAA experiences, one that's controversially priced $70. Returnal's commercial success is further proven by the impressive player statistics revealed by Housemark on Twitter. According to the developer, PlayStation 5 owners have spent accumulatively along that 5.8 million hours playing it. So they shared this whole graph thing on Twitter. Uh, which is pretty cool as someone who appreciates a good stat, a good a good bit of statistics, you know, lo- love love some of that. So what it says, let's go through it quickly. I, I think some of this is, I guess if you, the name of the first boss is a spoiler, but come on, at this stage, if you've, if you've played the game and you, and you haven't got to the first boss, it's like, come on. Uh, so hours played, that 5.8 million. Player deaths, 9.2 million deaths. There's a lot of deaths, a lot of dying. In return. Enemies killed. 1,015.9 million enemies have been killed by players. And the most player deaths have been called by, uh, caused by Frike. Frike, who is the first boss in the game that everyone comes up against. Uh, I'm not surprised by that because the amount of, uh, you know, the, the conversation online is lots of people being able, unable to beat the first biome. And in my opinion, I still think that Frike is the, probably the hardest boss in the game. Um, possibly, I don't know, like maybe there's other ones that are harder, but I definitely feel like it has that thing like Souls games where it's, uh, overcoming that first hurdle is often just the, the toughest mentally. I don't, I don't know. Like you may struggle later in the game, but it's not as tense or anything. Cause you, you sort of know what you're doing a bit more. Uh, and the most popular weapon in the game by players is the Hollow Seeker. So yeah, uh, I finished the game the first time with the Hollow Seeker, so I can I completely understand that. But the Hollow Seeker is this cool little, uh, it's got a huge ammo capacity, uh, has a, lo- a bunch of cool add-ons you can get, including like spawning a turret that shoots things for you, spawning like a wave, constructs, like wave laser beam in there and sort of stuff like that. That's cool. Um, and it's easy to shoot because it's got such big capacity. You can, you can miss shots and these sorts of things. So I'm, I'm not too surprised about that. But hey, you know, if you want to know more about what a good returnal gun is, I've got an article up, explosionnetwork.com, where I rank all the guns for you and tell you which ones you should use. If you still need some tips and tricks, you should do that. And in PlayStation Productions, one new story about what PlayStation movies, games, or no, movies, TV, it's got coming up. And it relates to the Last of Us HBO series. So uh, they have cast, of course, as we know. Uh, everyone, Pedro Pascal, Bella Ramsey, and Gabriel Luna so far as Joel, Ellie, and Tommy. None of those people appear in the video games. They did not recast Troy ba- Baker. How dare they? But uh, in a strange turn of events, and one that I'm perfectly fine with but i really thought they would never do something like this they have cast uh they've cast merle dandridge who was the voice of marlene in the in the games she'll be reprising her role as marlene in hbo's 
uh, upcoming Last of Us series adaptation. So that's pretty cool. I mean, she's fantastic in that role. She's a fantastic, uh, I always hate using the term like proper, but I just mean like um, uh, varied actor. I don't know, like what's pro- like, because I, I think all acting is acting is good, you know, like I think Andy Serkis should have been nominated for some fucking awards and he wasn't simply because he was doing mocap and this sort of stuff. So, but I just mean like do more than video games, I guess is what is what I mean. And she's someone that does that. So she has the the onset experience that I guess maybe uh, voice actors just wouldn't have is, is a good way to put it. So she's got that under her belt. And of course she knows the character um, in and out. And she has the experience of working in the franchise and working amongst these characters and these sorts of things. It'll be interesting to see how much they change about her role. I would presume she's going to be in a lot more. I think she should probably be in a lot more, especially if they do what I've been talking about, which is, you know, into cutting more of the Firefly story and this sort of thing would be really cool and interesting. So maybe they'll do that. That'll be great. Um, but yeah, that's really, that's the uh, HBO Last of Us update for this week. Um, there's still obviously casting. If we're getting casting news, I expect them to start shooting it sometime soon. I'm sure they've cast a lot of people we just haven't heard about, but um, these ones either get leaked or they, they announce them or someone announces them or, you know, Hollywood. I think this one was a, uh, Double check here, yeah. So this one was by way of the Hollywood Reporter. So always there's a way. And I'll do it for this week's episode of Platinum Explosion. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a solo Dylan show. That's third person talk, but that's fine. Uh, let us know, and by us I mean me, or us still. I just, any comments, questions, concerns you've had about the show, but joining our Discord or tweeting at uh, me, us, whatever you want to do, you can find my Twitter, Explosion Over Twitter, heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. You can find our Discord by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. And if you liked this episode, enjoyed a little bit of a solo show, and you would like to let me know that I did a good job with such a thing, you can head over to explosionnetwork.com slash support us, which will let you donate to our Kofi page, a dollar or more, whatever you want to do, one off monthly. It's all super helpful for keeping the lights on. And you can buy a shirt there and these sorts of things that help out as well. And there's a little reminder that says, hey, if you listen on Apple Podcasts, or even if you don't have an Apple device, maybe go give the podcast a five-star review. Super helpful. Thank you very much. And until next week, or maybe this is like a state of play announced, I guess. I don't know. Remember that every trophy counts. Hey, don't forget you can subscribe to the show wherever you're currently listening, and you can drop a review if you can. Find more great shows like this and more content over at ExplosionNetwork.com. And please consider supporting us for as little as a dollar over on our Kofi page by heading to ExplosionNetwork.com slash support. Thanks for listening.